This has been at room temperature for almost 12 hours. The internal temperature of the chicken is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature is by health standards in the danger zone. Raw food at this temperature for over two hours is teeming with harmful bacteria. Now what happens if it stays on your cutting board? A number of these manufacturers make claims that their disinfectants kill the vast majority of bacteria and viruses that they come in contact with. These are lined up from least expensive per use to most expensive. Let's put some of these to the test. Which ones are the most cost effective? And let's also see how effective assumed natural disinfectants like vinegar and lemon are at killing bacteria. Here are national industry guidelines in the United States when disinfecting a surface like a cutting board. Wash the surface with warm, soapy water. Step two, rinse the surface with clean, warm water. Step three, let the surface dry. Step four, two options here. Either A, wipe down the surface with a warm water solution containing 200 parts per million bleach to water, or B, wipe down the surface with isopropyl alcohol of 70% or greater. Finally, step five, allow the surface to dry completely before use. This will give you a bacteria-free and virus-free surface. Now, according to the CDC, washing with soapy water and rinsing is enough unless the surface comes in contact with someone who's infected or sick. In restaurants in the United States, we're required to sanitize by law, and most commercial establishments choose bleach to sanitize their surfaces. Now, bleach is progressively being banned in Europe because bleach in a concentration is hazardous both to your health and dangerous to your skin. It can burn you. So I'm asking all of my European friends that are watching this to let me know in the comments down below, what are you using to sanitize? What exactly does a safe 200 parts per million look like? These test strips are designed to detect bleach solutions in water. They are readily available and inexpensive. We use these daily in the restaurant industry to make sure that our mechanical dishwashers are working properly. In the United States, it's one teaspoon of bleach to four and a quarter cups of water. In the metric system, it's five milliliters of bleach to one liter of water. This is a very mild concentration and it produces very little to no scent of bleach. We're required again by law to prepare a bucket like this one with a 200 parts per million solution of bleach to warm water at every prep station and it has to be changed hourly. All of these solutions are ready to use out of the bottle except for the doTERRA, well the bleach too. Lutera is concentrated, so I'm going to dilute it to the manufacturer's specifications of 2 US tablespoons to 24 US ounces of water, though doTERRA does not claim to be a disinfectant. It's labeled as a cleaner. Now, most people use some form of soap on a sponge to clean their cutting boards. They rinse off the soap, and then they let it air dry. In the industry, if we cut raw meat on a cutting board, it has to be washed in a mechanical dishwasher or manually using a three compartment sink set up and then fully air dried before continued use. The question is, what happens if you don't wait until it's fully evaporated before the next use? Let's see what good old fashioned soap does all on its own and then rinse it with hot water. I've sectioned off my cutting board into a three by three grid. Each one of the rectangles will be disinfected with one of nine disinfectants. Here's the order on this chart. Let's see how the disinfectants do on a surface that has been cleaned and rinsed with soapy water. But since we tend to be impatient, what happens if we don't let the disinfectants dry? I'm going to dry the surface so we can see if the disinfectants applied to the cutting board are more effective when dried. Just to speed things up a bit, I'm going to dry the cutting board surface with a hairdryer using its cold air setting. I want to see if these disinfectants work well on their own without soap. Let's recontaminate this cutting board with chicken, wipe off the excess with a paper towel, and apply the nine disinfectants without washing the board with warm soapy water. Since the national requirements for the food service industry mandate that we have to let the surface dry when sanitizing with bleach or alcohol before use, I'm curious to see what happens if we take a sample of the alcohol and the bleach sanitizers when they're wet. After applying the disinfectants, I'm letting them dry.
All of the Petri dishes here were left at room temperature at 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius for five days. I was contemplating putting them in my dehydrator at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, but I decided against it since a cutting board is typically left out at room temperature. Here is what bacteria looks like from a surface contaminated with chicken. Some very fascinating results here. The CDC was right. Hot, soapy water followed by a rinsing with hot water, then left to dry, produces no cultures in the petri dish. So that's positive. There's no bacteria growth except for two, the alcohol and the Clorox cleanup. But I think this isn't because of bacteria from the cutting board. I think it's from some form of contamination. The reason why I say that is because there wasn't any bacteria in the soap only petri dish. Here are all nine disinfectants swapped dry, no bacteria growth on all nine. Now look, I'm not a chemist and this was my first try at swabbing sterile cotton swab onto the surface of agar. Agar is the medium used to grow cultures in a petri dish. I was a bit heavy handed so that's why you may see inconsistencies on the surface. Just me pressing down too hard, not bacteria. Bacteria cultures are circular dots that spread out. Not all the results were positive. The second time around I smeared the board with chicken, I bypassed cleaning the cutting board with soapy water, but I did allow the disinfectants to dry. All the disinfectants killed the bacteria from the chicken except one. Can you guess which one? Hit that like button when you've confirmed your guess. The bleach solution. That is very surprising. The alcohol when applied and tested while wet and dry produced no cultures. The bleach, both wet and dried without soapy water, did grow bacteria in the petri dish. That's a bit disturbing since in the restaurant industry, we wipe down the surface of everything with the bleach solution all day long. Now granted, we never ever wipe down a cutting board that's been contaminated by any raw food with just a sanitizer alone. But a bleach solution, we use that constantly. Again, it's not recommended to be used on its own, but it should be used after cleaning with soapy water and it should be left to dry. So let's talk about the other cleaners and why or why not you should use or not use them. The Clorox wipes did a good job of killing bacteria as well. But when Clorox cleanup, a bleach based product was applied directly to the contaminated cutting board, it didn't kill all the bacteria. The Lysol wipes did what they claimed to do and they worked perfectly. I was super excited to see what I call the natural products. They worked. These are peroxide, vinegar, and lemon. But even though they did, here's why I would be apprehensive about recommending them for use. I mean, clearly they work well and whatever bacteria is on chicken, but I do not have the ability to test them on other bacteria like E. coli. I'm not a lab. If you are a professional, I would love to connect with you if you can shed light on whether or not products like peroxide, vinegar, or lemon would kill all bacteria and viruses. Also, chemical disinfectants are engineered to kill viruses I'm not sure if vinegar, lemon, or peroxide is going to do that. The doTERRA is also an all-natural cleaner, not a disinfectant, but it did a great job of killing the bacteria from chicken. I'm not sure if the doTERRA would kill viruses and other bacteria as well, but it smells great. It's also natural and it comes concentrated, leaving less of a packaging imprint on the environment. It's also kind of pricey, but you get a lot out of this little bottle. Also, please note that nobody has asked me, given to me, or paid me to review any of the products I used here today. Now, I have left isopropyl alcohol intentionally out of the list of natural disinfectants, even though it can be considered as natural because it's an approved disinfectant and it clearly works. It's also middle of the road price-wise, not the cheapest and not the most expensive. So the recommended way to disinfect with alcohol seems to be the best all around. The most expensive, is lemon. It does work, but lemons aren't cheap. Help your friends stay healthy by sharing this video with them and learn more by clicking on one of these videos here. Cheers.